Now, I know I have a bit of a propensity to overthink things and overanalyze things, and that's kind of who I am, for better and sometimes for the worse. And specifically when it comes to professional wrestling, at times, it can hinder my enjoyment of the product. Because, let's face it, we're talking about scripted entertainment featuring half-naked to more than half-naked men hitting, kicking, and grappling each other for extended periods of time. How serious should we take it? And sometimes the over-the-top, the outlandish, the not-so-sensical, when you go back through the scope of history, can be the things that you remember the most, the most entertaining. So I get it that sometimes it is best to just shut it off, talk about the brain, shut it up, meaning this, and just watch and enjoy. And there's something to be said about that. Unfortunately, that's not really who I am. So it's not that easy for me to do. On the flip side, there is something, even with professional wrestling being fake, scripted, predetermined, whatever, that it has to be at least grounded in some type of reality. There has to be something fundamentally to me deep down that makes sense about it, that I could relate to, that might potentially allow me to at least somewhat suspend disbelief, or at least be able to follow the story. You can do all types of wild and crazy things, but if the fundamental nuts and bolts of the story make sense in some way, it's something I can relate to and understand, then to me it's much easier to get down with it, much easier to get along with it, and hopefully potentially enjoy it. There has to be at least a little bit of logic. I don't think that that is too much to ask. And I bring this up because you look at what the WWE is doing now with Becky Lynch. And to me, it just doesn't make any sense. It's like there are so many elements that clearly pull you in one direction and the WWE just can't help themselves by going against the grain for reasons that will always be unbeknownst to me. So you look at Becky Lynch, who cleaned herself up a little bit and I think looks outstanding now. You know, talking about Becky Lynch now compared to a year or two years ago, like that's a Becky Lynch that I think is sexy now. That's the type of Becky Lynch that I've been waiting to see. So to me, she looks a lot better, a lot cleaner. Um, clearly, a decent talent in the ring. I feel like her mic skills have improved and all of this. But you get to SummerSlam and the build-up to SummerSlam. And Carmella's the cowardly, chickenish heel champion, the, the cookie-cutter type that you're used to from WWE. And here's Becky Lynch, here's going to be her big moment, her big opportunity, her time to shine. But then, her so-called best friend, Charlotte, coming back from her busted booby, gets an immediate opportunity to have a chance to wrestle for her said SmackDown Women's Championship at SummerSlam. And she takes it, she gets it, and ends up in the match, and now it's a triple threat. And now don't get me wrong, from a reality standpoint, humans by nature are incredibly selfish, self-serving, and all of that. And in the real world, even if your friend was going for a job that paid more, if you thought that that job would be better for you and you wanted to make more, you probably would go for it too. Hey, at the end of the day, it's kill or be killed. I get that. So Charlotte wanting a shot at the championship, which from a wrestling standpoint you would think is the ultimate of what a character is trying to do, makes a lot of sense. You get to SummerSlam. You have this triple threat. And ultimately, Becky Lynch comes this close to winning only for Charlotte to be the one that stops her from winning so that way she can win herself. And Charlotte, of course, big surprise, is the new SmackDown Women's Champion. After the match, you get the face-off, if you will, 
and Becky pretends to be really happy, and they shake hands, and they hug, and all of this. And eventually, she goes batshit on Charlotte. She was this close to only watch her best friend screw her out of what she wanted so badly. That's life. It happens. But now the WWE comes off of that, which to me is a clear face turn for Becky. I know what you're going to say. She's already a face, and then she does this. I meant a real face turn to now you go to SmackDown and she's trying to package herself in a certain way. You're presenting a promo in a certain way. You're trying to make her sound like a heel, even though the crowd's not fully getting behind it. And this is to me another example of WWE fail logic. Hashtag WWE ruins everything. The whole dynamics of this story, especially if you're gonna play with a Becky being heel and a Charlotte being face, is just completely and totally ridiculous. Like, first you look at Charlotte Flair. What the hell about her makes her a babyface? She gets opportunity after opportunity after opportunity, solely, primarily at least, because of the lineage she comes from, because of who her dad is. Nepotism run amok. People don't like that. People resent that. You could talk about in this country specifically, free market this and that, but ultimately it's about those families and those centers of power that accumulate, grow, and continue to have a stranglehold over that power that inhibits a true free market system. Anybody that thinks we have a free market system is completely nuts. We don't. You could say talent is distributed equally in this world, but opportunities are not, and that is absolutely the case. So Charlotte, because of the lineage that she comes from, gets opportunities that others do not. She gets an easier path than others will ever dream of getting. She's been a multiple-time champion. She's forced down people's throats, just inherently not very likable as an on-screen character. There is really nothing about her that screams somebody that you want to root for, somebody that you really want to get behind from a traditional heel baby face dynamic. And then to top that all off, she gets thrown into this match that her best friend was already in and then cost her best friend the match, cost her best friend the title, and wins it herself. The fuck is truly likable about that? Whereas Becky Lynch sees her best friend get all these opportunities that she could only ever dream of getting, finally gets her chance, her big moment in the sun, her big spotlight here at SummerSlam, and then watches as her best friend rips it out of her hands. You see all of this, and Becky lashes out because the bitch just backstabbed her. So in the real world, a bitch backstabs you. The other bitch is going to stab back. And yet we're trying to make Becky Lynch hate it. We're trying to make Becky Lynch a villain. We're trying to make Becky Lynch the heel. And to me, that just makes absolutely no sense. If anything, you should be making Becky Lynch a babyface with a big-time edge. You know, we, so often with our characters in wrestling now, specifically WWE, it's really hard to know who's supposed to be liked, who's not supposed to be liked. You know, the companies want to do one thing. Sometimes the fans want to do a different thing. Nobody can get on the same fucking page here. But to have a clearly defined character that really makes sense, that is logical is something that we lack significantly. Becky Lynch being a babyface that feels like her best friend stabbed her in the freaking back and then lashed out because she got tired of it and she's getting tired of being overlooked, tired of being taken advantage of and feeling like she was taken advantage of by her best friend who saw an opportunity or weaselly sell is something that a lot of people can relate to. To me, it's very clear with this story, you either A, Charlotte, executes a double turn where Becky Lynch really is the baby face and Charlotte did it all along and used her friend because it was beneficial to her, that's a great fucking heel. That's what a villain would do. Not sit there and be apologetic about this or sit there and be like, well, I just did what I had to do. And did, did, did. No, fuck that shit. If you're going to do it, do it. Especially if you're thinking about positioning Rousey versus Charlotte Flair potentially is a main event of 35. Yeah, you can sit there and try and make it a big fight type of feel, but the whole story dynamics of that are going to work significantly better if you get to the point where Charlotte is a fucking heel, living off of the fact that she comes from her daddy's loins, 
that she is wrestling royalty and Ronda Rousey is a pretender, not a contender in the professional wrestling world, like the story freaking writes itself. And sitting there and rushing to it in January or February to turn Charlotte heel is not the way to do it. This is where you lay the foundation, you plant the seeds, and you start to water and watch it grow right now. This is when it should be happening. And Becky Lynch should be much better off for it because you've given us a diva, a woman, a female wrestler in WWE that's a little bit different. That's somebody that you can clearly root for. It's not that hard. Or even if you wanted to be a little bit more advanced in your storytelling, if you're WWE, you could have sat there and said, hey, you know, Becky Lynch did some bad stuff that maybe she shouldn't have. And that's not the way she acted, but she's kind of got a point. Charlotte. She did some shit that was kind of snivelly and kind of weaselly, but she's also kind of got a point. And you can maybe tell a layered kind of nuanced story where you allow things to kind of play out and see which way the fans take you. But of course, the WWE does neither of those. Of course, Road Dogg and the WWE are going to say all types of stupid shit to make this seem like whether they're going with this, at least the way it looks right now, is going to make any damn sense whatsoever. Becky Lynch, on so many levels, based off of what happened and what she did, is the hero here. Stop trying to make her a villain. Look at freaking Charlotte and tell me what is babyface about her. For the sake of the story, for the sake of the women's division, for the sake of Charlotte's character, it's kind of like Randy Orton. Whenever they're a face, it goes against the grain and it's ultimately very lame. They can be inherently unlikable people or characters, vastly different reasons, mind you. So it is much more natural to hate them when you are given a reason to hate them. If I can take the easy route, work smarter versus harder, and nurture what's already there, I would much rather do that than go against the damn grain and work three times as hard to sit there and try and make something work that ultimately isn't going to work. But that's what the WWE chooses. We want people to cheer Charlotte for some dumb dick reason. We're going to force the people to cheer for her. Ding dong, dumb dicks. It's not the way to go. Becky is the one to like here. Charlotte is not. And because... One more time as a reminder, hashtag WWE ruins everything. Of course, these dumb dicks flip the freaking rolls. Unbelievable. Just unbelievable.